Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in today. Over the course of the next weeks, months, and for the rest of my life, I'm gonna be trying to give out content to people where they get inspired and get educated. So that's not all gonna come from me, but I want to be able to bring people in that I feel inspired by and have learned from over the years. And one of my best friends, James Rubin, is with us today. So say hello, James. Hi guys, how are you? Hope all is well, how are you, Mark? Perfect, yeah, good, thanks, man. Now, before we get into this, I kind of want to give a backstory about everything. So, James is here today because I feel that over the last 10 years, he's been the most dedicated and focused person I've met, and he's done that by building this business, which we're going to speak about. And I think, I honestly believe that everyone can learn from someone like James in regards to getting focused and driven in, in what they do. Now, it sounds very simple what he's done, but I know James from when we were 12, 13 years old, and I can tell you it's a massive transformation to what he was. So both of us was, were, didn't do well at school. Uh, college was a pretty much of a no-go as well. Uh, but I hope James doesn't mind me talking a bit here, but um, the, the way that I see things from the outside, which I think is quite important, this is how you should... I think it's a good way to understand what other people see, whether you take it on or not, but also as well, like how are people actually seeing who you are? And um, I, my story about James is that I think he didn't have much direction and came across this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And that really set the foundation for him to be on this path. And since that time, He's just developed and built and, and put his future together for him. It's, it's only nothing but success. Obviously, obstacles along the way, but he's been very, very successful in overcoming those. And I, I believe that you guys are going to get inspired by listening to James today. So, James, forgive me if I've kind of uh, jumped on a couple of the stories you wanted to tell, but kind of, do you want to let us know a little bit about the company and, and yourself? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, 100%, no problems. So I started a waste company, recycling company back in 2012. Okay. After, you know, not really um, doing very well at college, school, college, university, got kicked out of school, went to college, didn't get good grades at college. Um, was asked to leave university after the first year. Yeah. Then found myself in recruitment and a range of other jobs which didn't work out. I think I was sacked from about three jobs before I then fell into the world of, of entrepreneurialism and running businesses. And it's a crazy story because I started working with somebody who really affected me. I was, to say, a little bit immature. I was about 23, 24 at the time, maybe 22, 23 at the time. And I started working with somebody called Mark. Mark Perring, who ran a company called MRP, uh, doing recruitment. And he taught me, he was quite militant in a way, very caring, but militant in a way. It taught me how to work. It was a sales role, taught me how to recruit. He was very successful in his own right, doing what he'd done. Um, and basically taught me what it meant to be a good salesperson. Okay. The work ethic that comes with it. It was a hard type of love where I was almost brought to tears sometimes in the office, which, you know, if you had an HR department, they probably, um, you know, they wouldn't agree with most things that happened. But no. besides the point, I think what I needed and I think what a lot of people need that are growing up in, from, you know, from an immature stage to a mature stage is somebody that can show them the ropes. I had that in him. <clears throat> worked with him for about a year and a half, didn't quite work out um, after that. But what I learned was transformational. Not only in what he taught me himself, but there was a time where I was, and he knew how much I earned, he paid my wages, and he knew that I was trying to go on, on holiday. I wanted to book out a holiday with friends to go to Las Vegas. And he was, you don't have the money to go. Why are you going? Yeah. All of this stuff. And before, before he, he said, look, before I give you the authority to go, authorize the, the, the holiday, I want to give you a book. <clears throat> Make up your mind after you, I'll, I'll only sign it off once you've read it. And that book was Rich Dad Poor Dad. And what happened was, was my whole, I can't explain to you what happened after reading that book. It was like my whole life just 
it was just a whole new world opened up. Yeah. And what Rich Dad, Poor Dad, what Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the book, teaches is that, you know, basically how to uh, manage money and what the, the rich see that the poor don't and how it's a mindset. But the fundamentals in that book is that you are your biggest mind, you are your biggest asset, your mind is your biggest asset. And you should constantly focusing on, focus on growing and developing. Now, it didn't quite work out with Mark, as I said, but I took that learning and I was working, you know, fast forward a year, long story short, fast forward a year, I have this mindset. Now I have this mindset, I want to work in, the, I wanted to work in the financial markets and end up getting a job in corporate finance for a junior brokers. And I'm now with this mindset, job that I wanted, I'm reading a book that in the back of Rich Dad Poor Dad, they had some recommendations and yeah. one book stood out, which is called Think and Grow Rich. Amazing. And the Think and, Think and Grow Rich book was, you know, the, the one that really shaped my thinking. So that then got me into business. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I think like Rich Dad Poor Dad, for me, like I didn't read it till a few years after when you read it, but it really is something that can teach you so much just from a basic book because this whole education system that we've all been rolled out into or rolled through um there's so much it doesn't teach us and just from that book like you can just develop your skills so much and like you said it's the foundation that, that really got you onto the mm. next level which was think and grow rich then you just grew from there afterwards so yeah that's, that's an amazing yes. thing yeah nice yeah okay. and i think you i think you said it as well it, it in its it's a very basic book it's yeah. so profound but it's basic and that's so important because at the time, what I needed wasn't anything complex. So it's, it's the simplicity is, is how, how it got me. Yeah. And then it started something. And it, it, it's really key. Nice. And another thing I wanted to mention was that you've always, since you picked up that book, you'd always been somebody that would try to, well, preach to people about education and how the school system is so backwards and they need to be doing this and reading this and getting out and doing this and the message was there and and what you were saying was actually 100 percent true and there was no doubt about that but and this is what i've noticed with you so much in the last few years is that you've got the same message but you've said it you're saying it in such a different way now and it's it's so important like the message needs to be good but it's it's important what you say but it's more important how you say it and you're now speaking to a lot of people on a really good level in a way that they're actually going to listen and you come out with some really good stuff. So I just wanted to kind of say that and we've got that journey from kind of school leaver, finding that book, having a message, not really knowing how to put that message out. And now in a way that you're really like reaching out to a lot of people. So I, I think that's really, really good. Yeah. And that's, that, that's something that, you know, only after a few years, do you start to learn because you get so excited about yeah. a certain philosophy or a way of thinking yeah. or a way of living that you're like, I want to tell everybody, I want the world to know. It's like, I want to help people because I know that there is so, a better life for people. And, and it's at the time I, I was probably too much with that yeah. in a way, which was quite a, um, an immature way of communicating. And after a while, you start to recognize that actually you can't force people to think a certain way. You definitely can't force people to change. Exactly. And it's only if people are ready for it will they start to make changes. But there is the value and the, you know, never underestimate the power of planting a seed. And this is what, what, what I started to learn. So with the growth of the business, which was, you know, went from zero to five million in five years, first five years was absolute chaotic. Okay. First six years was chaotic because that level of growth. Five million um, sterling, five million sterling. Yeah. Yes, sterling. Yeah. yeah. So it's five million GBP. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that level of growth, you, no one, there's no one, there's a very select few people that actually have can run a business of that size. But there's also a very select few people that have actually felt or seen a business grow and been at the helm of a business that's grown that quickly, yeah. that fast. And there's not a book you can take off the, the shelf and read. So it's a collective um, approach to learning where you have to learn finance, marketing, sales, uh, communication, how to 
how to, you know, the industry specifically. Um, and I, the, the obsession that I got for learning allowed me to fine tune myself over a period of time. But the, the most important thing that I learned was from a Chris Howard course that I went on. And it was talking about inspirational leaders. And it spoke about how important it is to work through people. And I've always been fascinated by Richard Branson and how Branson um, became Branson. But Branson only became Branson because of the people, the support group of people we had beneath him. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, right, well, well, how? Well, it's obviously the way that he communicates. Yeah. So the communication skills required to, you know, not only sell, market, but also inspire and build a team is fundamental. Yeah. to any form of business growth nice. so that's why the message over time has been finely tuned because yeah. i've worked with it yeah it's taken time to hash it out but you've got this you've got this thing to work with now that you can spread to people yeah before you mention the word excitement okay you get excited yeah but i don't think you can i don't think people can match that with the sort of industry you're in which we haven't spoken about yet but which is actually waste management so tell me and the people, how excitement into waste management right, really gets you going. So this is something that is so important. And it's not just linked to the specifics of the waste market, the waste industry. But once you're in the waste market, it's very, very, very um, interesting. Yeah. It's very exciting because it's a very backwards industry. It's a dinosaur industry. There's not a lot of innovation um, digitally. Te technolo technologically, yes, with okay. the way that we're processing waste. But, but, you know, there's no other industry that's closely linked to the environment than the, than the waste industry. Now, that's one thing. The second thing, which is what I believe most people need to be addressing, is something that Viktor Frankl in his book, A Man's Search for Meaning, touches on when he talks about logotherapy. And what logo therapy is, is his form of psychology that attaches meaning to everything that you do. And what Simon Sinek in, the, in, in his golden circle in starting from why, he always talks about how it's so important, how all inspiring and all you know, inspiring businesses, inspiring leaders, best businesses, best leaders start inside out. And for me, what I've managed to do through a process of, you know, constant um, refinement of the vision and my strategy is to link what we do in the waste industry yeah. with the health of our planet. Now, whether that's true or not, because we're not at that scale to actually make such a massive impact, I believe it. So the meaning associated with my business, because of my why, you know, yeah. is so important so that's what wakes me up it's not only that it's a service i'm yeah. serving no matter how many people our employees you know at the beginning it was customers but then after a while it was like right okay now i need to switch my focus on employees because um when your business is a certain size you need to look after your customers but then when it's a, when it gets bigger you need to look after your employees that then look after your customers so for yeah. me it's then about service how am i serving my staff how am I serving the stakeholders around me? How am I serving business partners? So I'm doing work that has meaning, irrespective of the vehicle, the meaning is the same. Yeah. And through that, I've developed like this coaching program, which helps the staff and, and everything else. So we're developing that culture. Nice. Yeah, because I see, I see from your site, and we've spoken about it, it's like your mission is in regards to improving the customer service and being more envir environmentally aware in regards to the industry you're in. And I think that's something you guys are definitely doing. So that's, that's great. It's very, very yeah. good. Yeah, nice. So one thing I wanted to touch on as well, which is why I've got you on here. Um, a lot of people, they run businesses, okay? And they can be very successful at what they do. But what tends to happen is they wear so many hats within this business and they can never actually step away and actually have another part of their life apart from being 100% involved in work. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I feel that those first number of years, you were 100% focused and doing everything that needed to be done to run that business. You were doing a lot, a lot, a lot. But what I love about what you've done is you've set up a structure 
yeah, which not everyone knows how to do, which is what I think is so valuable here, that you, you can actually step away a little bit and give other people the responsibility who you trust to actually, to actually manage and instill what you're trying to do. And I think that's so valuable. So if you can give us a bit of insight into that, please. So again, back to a book. Um, I mean, books are so important. Yeah. Learning and studying are so important. If in nature, if we don't grow, we die. That's yeah. that's that's the fact. And 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 it's never. It's my whole thing is I, I worry for people that are saying stay, staying stagnant. It's yeah. like I'm constantly developing and growing, reinventing myself. And with that came the the growth of the business. Like I say, you can't grow business to a certain size, the size that we're talking about, if you don't do it through people. So how how did I achieve that? Yes, at the beginning it was 12 to 15 hour days, yeah. nonstop, sacrificed every other area of my life, friends, family, um, social events, the gym, fitness, still had my health in mind because that's always very important to me, but it was all or nothing for five years with the business. Um, probably even more because there was a bit I was doing beforehand for two years. So probably about eight years of my life, it was all about this, this, financial and professional focus because I come from nothing you know I had nothing zero nothing yeah. was given to me at all it was just literally I had to work for everything um, which made me value it a lot more but then after about four years into the into the business I picked up a book called um, E-Myth by Michael Gerber okay and what E-Myth the he's Michael Gerber's whole um, teaching in that book was how to distinguish working in your business and working on your business and the difference between working in your business i going to jump in the truck and do a clearance calling a customer for to pay an invoice booking a job onto the system um, hiring staff member whatever that's all working in the business Whereas the working on the business is the stuff that's going to make the business grow. So you strategically develop it, building business plans, um, you know, understanding our, our cash cycles, understanding who we need to get on the bus in terms of in the, in the proper seats in order to drive the business forward in terms of the strategy that we've, the, the vision that we've got and strategy that we've put in place. So defining processes, redefining processes, looking at the systems that we're, we're putting in place, all of this, the distinguishing point came when I was like, okay, right, now I need to fully understand my business in that where am I working in and where am I working on? And he's got this exercise where what you do is you, you write down everything that you're doing over a period of a week, everything, and then you put an E, M, or a T, M, or E by, by that. And the T stands for technician, so that's the technician's role. M stands for manager. E stands for entrepreneur. And you can start to see how much time you're spending as a technician, jumping on the trucks, booking the job on, selling to the customer, whatever. Then you can see how much time you're spending as a manager, you know, managing the people, managing the processes, looking at the, the, the reports, the chart, whatever. And then as an entrepreneur. And I, I, after a while, because awareness is the, you know, they say a problem well stated is a problem half solved. Because I become, started to become aware of all of the time that I was sort of attributing to being a technician and a manager, I then started to know, I then understood what I needed to delegate. Okay, and then it allows you to build. Then I took that and built job specifications for what I wanted other people to do. So it allowed me to then work on being more of a manager now instead of the technician. And then over time, it works the same. But um, that's the very very technical way of doing it. It sounds very, very yeah. good and very, but it didn't work out that way as much. It was, a, it was a lot. It sounds like it's an easy task. It's not, no, but no. also with that, I didn't, that's the theory. Yeah. They say, listen, listen to me. Well, don't watch me too close. Yeah. 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 No, amazing. But I mean, it gets your mind right. It gets I your think, mind right. I think what, what's really good here is first of all, like I want to let everyone know that all the books that James is mentioning and referencing, like we're going to put this in the, in the district in the description below. So don't worry about that. There's some absolute gems of books. But another thing is like, you know, James has learned a lot over these years and he's always happy to reference the people that he's learned from. 
And not everyone does that. Like a lot of people, they just start talking and saying like, this is my own and I've created this. But no, James is very humble to know that he's, I, I say this thing called ABL, always be learning. Yeah, and that's literally what James does every single day. And he's humble enough to mention who he learns from as well. And there's some absolutely brilliant guys there. So James, after this, I'll get those details and we can put it in the, in the box below, yeah? Perfect. Perfect, all right, cool. Brilliant, so- that's, I think, I just wanna, sorry, but I just wanna mention something on that. Because if you actually think about it, nothing is your own. Nothing is mine, nothing no, is yours. Exactly, yeah. It's all recycled information and knowledge that we're just taking. And they say the way to the way to see the future is to stand on the shoulders of the giants that have come before us yeah. in order to then know where to go. So you have to look at the people behind you, give them credit yeah. and reference them, but then take it to the next level in, in making it your own. Exactly. And, and modernise yeah. it as well to the existing environment that you're in as well. Yes. Yeah, adapting to it. Make it modern, yeah. Exactly. No, that's, that, that is exactly it. And we're all on this journey. And like we've spoken about, like I've, I've really submersed myself into learning at the moment. And there's so much. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I have a good level and I want to help others. But the only way I can help more people is by learning more and actioning it and put it out to people. So the, the, the more that we do each day, the more we speak to people, you know, like you said before, you've had messages from people where you've, you've messaged them or they've sent you a message saying that like, you've really helped me. And that, that, makes, that makes such a difference. And it's not everything that it's all about, but when somebody does that, it just feels so good and it means that you're doing something good. And, and that's what we're here for, to help and inspire others. Yeah, it's, I think, I can, from speaking to you recently, yeah. I can tell that you've got the bug. Yeah. Something that I caught a long, long time ago, which is um, Albert Einstein said it the best. He said, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. The more I realize I don't know, the more I want to learn. Yeah. So it's like this never ending never cycle ending. of just consuming information. But then the key with that is people say knowledge is power, but it's not. Applied knowledge is power. Because I can, I can know that a hamburger, eating a hamburger every day for the rest of my life is going to make me ill. But if I still eat the hamburger, there's no point in knowing it. In actual fact, if you know it and still do it, you're more foolish than the person that doesn't know it and does it. Yeah. So you have to put these things in action. You have to apply it. No, exactly. Exactly. No, I love it. Absolutely love it. So when we, um, we spoke before and we were looking at these uh, little five little tips to give to people. We were looking at a topic because everyone likes to give a top five or top seven or top 10 things of ways to do things now, as we all know. So you decided it was going to be on top five things to stay motivated. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you remember yes, this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 100%. Brilliant. All right, cool. So do you want to hit us off with them, please? 100%. So for me, let me define motivation. Okay. Motivation, so maybe we should have put five things um, to inspire, but motivation is something external, and motivation only lasts a certain amount of time. And you need to constantly be getting external references to be able to fuel that motivation. Now, inspiration is something a lot different. Inspiration comes from within. It comes from somewhere within you. So you need to, what I, what I believe is, and what I've done within myself is given myself this way of life, a certain philosophy that it, the, the fire never stops burning. And it's done through five simple steps. Okay. The first one, is, first one is gratitude. You must always show gratitude for what you've got. And it's not as airy fairy, you know, there is scientific proof behind it. Because being grateful for what you've got is one thing. Yeah. But actually, if you look at the science, showing gratitude, focusing on what you've got, as opposed to what you haven't got, starts to rewire the brain. Yeah, so rewiring the brain for positivity allows you to now start to see more opportunity. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, you know, there's a problem, what am I going to do? Once you've done gratitude for a certain amount of time, it allows you to, like I say, rewire the brain to start seeing opportunities everywhere because you're looking for the positive in things exactly. as opposed to the negative and the barriers. So gratitude is such, a, such an important part. That's the first step of the journey. Okay. The second step, I'd say, is 
you know, understanding how you speak. Words are very powerful in that the first person that hears what you say is yourself. But there's two forms of, of, of talk. There's the external speech, what we say in front of everybody, but then there's the internal talk. Exactly. Now, yeah. The internal talk, you know, we, we all have it, what we say to ourselves. But if you end up going to a, a, a doctor and you say, I'm, I've got these voices in my head, they'll probably put you on pills. But, yeah, yeah. But we, all, we all have it, right? Yeah, big time. But it's like, how do you then master? How do you master that internal talk? So for me, it's affirmations. So one of my affirmations is the harder it is, the better I get. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. So whenever something comes up that's hard, yeah. right, I'm saying to myself that affirmation. So now I'm like, okay, right, I'm going to get better because this is hard. Yeah. Oh, I need to go search for the skills. Does that make sense? No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So that those two are the foundations. And basically what you're doing there, you're setting up a feeling of emotion because you're now feeling in a certain state, a certain way. And you're now starting to master your inner talk, which will then, if stuff starts to happen, where stuff's going to go wrong on your journey all the time. That is a fact. That's one thing that schools don't teach us. You are going to get hit by life at some point on your journey. Yeah. It's not necessarily what that hit is or how that hit comes. It's then how you react to it. Yeah. And how you react to it is determined by whether or not you're a ship in the middle of the ocean and the storm comes, does the water get into the ship? Yeah. That's, you know, don't let the ship, that's how the ship sinks. Yeah. To see yourself like that. So for me, those two are the most important thing. The third thing that I'd say would be meditation. And meditation allows me the space, not only allows me the space, but, you know, learning scientifically. They say med half an hour worth of med meditation is the equivalent to four hours worth of sleep. And the amount of things that happen during meditation to your body is insane. Like the, the, um, the chemical, to, uh, uh, to, uh, there's, there's, we've got these things in our body called telomeres and it releases this chem chemicals called telomerase. Won't go into it now. You can yeah, it yeah. online. But what that does whilst you meditate, that actually increases your life expectancy. It eradicates certain diseases and illnesses in the body, but it, gives you a clarity on what you need to do next because you're creating space in between you and your problem. So instead of reacting all the time to certain situations, it allows you to respond. Yeah. It allows you to, let me take a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's a key thing. The fourth thing would be a not to judge Practice non-judgment and it doesn't mean not judging other people because it is that because, you know, they say whenever you judge somebody else secretly, you're judging yourself. Yeah. But it's also not to judge certain situations. It was William Shakespeare who said, uh, nothing, uh, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And I'm going to give you some examples. Yeah. So we had an example in 2017. I was about with the business groups a lot. Like I, like I mentioned before, we're about, I was collectively as a, as a, as a company, we're about 600,000 pounds in debt. And it was very, very shaky, very shaky. We had really severe cash problems for about 18 months. Now you look at that and if some of you, somebody would have said, you know, in six months time, you're going to have really, really bad cash flow problems, all of this stuff. And you're going to almost lose the business. You're going to have to sign up for loans and personally guarantee all these loans. You know, you think, oh my God, that's a yeah. dreadful situation. Yeah. However, now that I've come through it with the philosophy that I've got and the mindset that I've got and what I've understood from going through that, I can take on almost anything. Yeah. So now I look back, I'm like, was that a good or a bad situation? Look who I've now become because I've been able to navigate the business through that and transform the business. I can almost go, I can say to myself and I can say that I can almost go into any business that is suffering and transform it and turn it around because of what I've learned. Yeah. So my business skills are now much higher than they were. Whereas, you know, most people, if you would have said, this is what's coming, they'd have been like, Oh, I don't want that. No. Now I'm like, give me it. Yeah. Give me that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is no good or bad because the bad ends up being good in, in a way. Yeah. 
So it's practicing non-judgment. And the other thing is, is, is serving. So how do we serve each other? We're here to serve. We're put on this planet to serve one another. This is why business came in in the first place. I heard from somewhere a long time ago that the, the, the word company yeah. was derived from, from the Latin terms com pan. Pan is bread and com is to, is to share, to break okay. bread. Yeah. So this is where company, the word company came from. So our job as business owners, as business people, as, you know, even any, your job is not just as a business owner, as an employee, as a, as to, is to serve, whether it's to your customer, to your staff, and service comes in so many different forms. And actually what is so magical about service is once you see yourself as serving others, is you actually feel good about it. Yeah. There's certain hormones and chemicals that are released in the body when you do good for somebody else. Exactly. Um, you know, so so I don't know. I'm not. A, I don't know about all the science specifically, but yeah. I do know that there's certain hormones that are released: oxytocin, um, the bonding chemical, um, all of this stuff. So you actually get addicted. Yeah. And you start to feel good about helping people. So I think they are the things that keep me inspired. Um, not to mention as well, you know, always be learning, like you said. Yeah, nice, nice. I think like, I think everyone has a good intention to do good things. Like you're saying, like it's lovely to do things for people and to feel, and you, and you feel that. But I think the big word that gets in the way is greed with a lot of this. So in regards to businesses, the first thing a lot of these guys think about is, is the money. And then the customer service kind of goes away because it's to them, it doesn't mean as much, but people these days, and I'm so happy about it. Like they're not thinking so much of price. They're thinking more about how much value you're going to give to them. And if you can yeah. show that you can care for these people in a way, they'll be happy to use you as a service and refer you as well. So I can see from your website and people, and I know you personally as well, like that, that is your focus on everything. So I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, the gratitude part, I think, like recently in the last few months when I've really been switched on and this thing's kind of really started to take other levels, what I did was I wrote down this gratitude sheet. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't write down a gratitude sheet. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Just running out of battery, so now I just charge up. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is live, people, so you need it the other way around, James. Yeah, I know, sorry. No, it's the other way around. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps doing that. Hold on. If I can... There we go. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, so I reread Think and Grow Rich like two months ago, yeah? Because before the first time I read it, I never wrote anything out. I never wrote down my vision, never wrote down my gratitude, nothing. And I was like, right, I'm going to write it down this time. That's what I'm going to do. So I wrote down my gratitude sheet, but I wrote it down in a way where I actually hadn't had it. I, I didn't have these things to be grateful for because I didn't have it, but I was envisioning that I had this and it yes, was yes. good health. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't that well at that time, but I, I was gr grateful for being in good health. I was grateful that my parents were in my life, but now, now my dad is here every single day with me. So I've gratitude that it's so much. He's, he's stuck in the, in the apartment. You've attracted it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I've, I, I wished for someone to come into my life and now there's someone I'm seeing at the moment and that's happened. And in regards to like the business as well, like good things are happening. And that, that wasn't the case before. Like it was a little bit of a lost cause a few months ago, but I've, I really focused on getting these things into me and it does work. And now because I've got those things, I've now rewritten it again and I've put other things I'm grateful for that, I've, that I envision to see. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got a picture of your future and how it's going to be as well. And I think, like, like you're saying, like, that's such a big thing, the gratitude part. And just your um, respond and react, yeah. Just as soon as you said that, all it reminded me of was Zig Ziglar. When he talks about when you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a pill and it's, it's a bad thing if you're reacting to it. So it gives you medication, but you're reacting to it in a bad way. But if you go back and you're responding well to the medication, you know, it's a great thing. And, and that's what we're meant to do. Like if we react, it's a negative. If we respond, 
in a way that we can handle all these, all these um, objections and obstacles that are in our way. And I think, like what you said before about failing, yeah, like there was a time when you were quite a bit in debt. You learn so much more from that failure as long as, long as you learn it, you know? And then yeah. you can take it on. Well, that, well that's, that's the wisdom. That, yeah. That's wisdom. That's the, that's the difference between being wise and just being knowledgeable. Yeah. The wisdom is having the open, open mind. And this is why having an open mind is so important because having, the, having a mind that's open allows you to see things clearer. You're not closed off. You're not boxed in. Then you gain wisdom because you're learning from that experience. And how many people do we know that walk down the same street, fall down the same hole, walk down the same street, fall down the same hole, walk down the same street. Five or six years ago, they're still walking down the same street, falling yeah. down the same hole. Yeah. You know, it's like, when are you going to learn to walk down a different street? Just yeah. open your mind a little bit. I know. It's, it's yeah, so true. I mean, There's so many people like that. And, and you can only help them so much as well. Like, you can only take yeah. it to the so You can't force them to drink it, can you? You know? Well I've, well, I've learned that the hard way. And, yeah. and now it's, it's literally, you, you will attract into your life who, who you are there to help or who is there to help you. Yeah. you know? And that, that's really key. You can't go and help people that aren't asking for help. People need to ask. We all need help. This is the yeah. thing. And this is, this is where the ego comes in. No, I'm all right. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm always asking help. You love golf, right? Uh, what was it? Um, Tiger Woods. He had about seven, at the height of his career, had seven golf tip coaches. Yeah. He's the best, best, best golfer in the world. And yeah. he's got seven coaches who aren't as good as him, no. but they, they see him from a different perspective. Yeah. No, exactly. And, oh. and he reached, like, he'd change, a, he'd change a coach even when he'd, like, reached a top level no, one ever, no one's ever reached because he wanted to go to another level. And that, that was yes. what the amazing thing was. And he'd, he'd have a bad year because of the change, but then all of a sudden, he'd just come out again and just run the world again. It was just, it's an, yeah, he is an incredible sportsman to, to use an example. Yeah. But that's, that, and that's something I want to mention as well, is that with fame, and if you look at famous people right now, people that are in the public eye, unfortunately, I mean, it used to be that we live, that, that famous people were successful in their own right. So they only became, fame was a byproduct of success. But what we've got now is with all this reality TV and all yeah. this rubbish that's out there, mm -hmm. is we've got people in the public eye that don't necessarily, aren't successful in their own right. So people can get lost in this sea of information. So to tap into stuff that you need, to understand what to cut off, what to shut off, what to learn and what to educate and fill your mind with, because we consume on a daily basis wherever we go, yeah. is really key. So what you're doing in terms of education and training, that's where it's going. Because more and more people I meet, especially with sales, because more and more people I meet want to learn. Yeah. They want to grow. And the thing is with sales, it can never, ever, ever be digitalized. No. It can never be taken over by technology. Selling is such an art that you know, every day I'm selling. I don't jump on the phone and sell to my customers, but I'm selling to my wife. Yeah. My, my wife wants to buy Thai, I want Turkish yeah, yeah. as a takeaway. Yeah. I have to sell her the Turkish. Yeah, yeah. You know, the baby wants, the, the, our, our son who's 18 months, he wants a toy or whatever. You have to, it's, it's, is he gonna be the better salesman or am I? Yeah, exactly. And sales is influence, essentially, yeah. but I think it does get a bad name sometimes with selling. Yeah, I think with, with the technology coming in, and especially even with what's going on, a lot can be automated, but, you know, and, and that's for small ticket items, but for these big ticket items, emotion is so much involved, like, and you, you have to be able to get your, your belief about the product across to someone in a way that is value, and you're doing it in an ethical way, and they'll be happy to buy it, so... That's how I see it, automation on low ticket and the people who are good at what they do in a professional way, they'll excel even more because there'll be so more in demand. So there's even more of a reason to develop your skills as a salesperson because That's actually there is some form of, of redundancies of a, a level of sales. Big time, 100%. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. hundred percent what's going on. Like, you know, these, these alerts and people get notifications. Like if you go online now and you sign up to something, somebody used to call you before. Now it's kind of an email trail. So that's all gone. 
somebody following up with you as a customer service, if there's five touch points, maybe it's only two that are human now, the rest is robotic. So yeah, 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 you yeah, have yeah. to keep on yeah. adapting to this change that's going on to, to actually be able to survive. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and if you do as a salesperson, you're going to become a better human being because you're going to learn how to influence people. And as long as you're coming from a good place, exactly. that is really, really key because we need more people to be influenced higher. Yeah. That's what we need. We need people to, come high, to go higher in their development in their skill set. Well, I think we could talk about this for about five hours, but one thing I wanted to touch yes. on, which we won't talk about for five hours, but I think it's so important, is this emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, mm -hmm. social awareness, like personal skills, personal skills, like that is what is going to define good from great going forward. Yes. Like it's so important. Yes. This, this idea of go to school and have a good IQ, it doesn't help you adapt to society. And it's becoming even more important now with what's going on. Emotional, emotional intelligence. I like to call it sensory acuity, but okay. yeah, emotional. Well, I, I think sensory acuity is a form of emotional intelligence. I think it's more of a, spe a specific area of emotional intelligence, but you're right. Yeah. Because this is what we feed off of is emotions and human emotions. And, you know, just to use that in a, in a sales environment or a management environment or whatever, it's like, how are you, I serve that person yeah. so much that I'm willing to adapt the way that I speak, communicate, because communication isn't just speaking, but I'm willing to adapt how I communicate so I can fit into their world yeah. because I know what I have for them is going to benefit their life. So my duty now is to sell them that idea, product, service yeah. to get them to a next level in their life because it's like the Hoover. You know, the Hoover, if you didn't sell the Hoover when the Hoover didn't exist, yeah. you're, you're doing people a disservice. Yeah. So as long as you've got something you believe in, something that's doing good for people, is going to add value, your, your duty is to, is to sell. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if, if problem solvers is the most important thing and, and we take, as salespeople, we take, they've got a problem, a client's got a problem, we, we, work, we ask questions to understand more of what the problem is and then we come up with a solution for them. So we're actually helping. That's the emotional them. intelligence. Exactly. That's the emotional intelligence, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because it's having that empathy to understand their problem and be able to help them rather than joining them in the, um, you know, like worrying with them. You can come up with a solution to yeah. solve it, yeah. All right, man, this yeah. has been absolutely brilliant, lovely. Um, as I said, me and James and each other since we were like 12, 13. As I said, he was one of the cooler kids before, before I shut up a little bit. But um, we don't always get to talk like this, but because I, I live in Dubai and James lives in the UK, but um, like they say, like best friends, they just nothing changes, you know? Like we have, our lives have yeah. changed and everything, but we just still just can chat for hours and it's just absolutely cool, man. So it's been a pleasure having you on. And thank you. And I think with that, it's like, it's such a beautiful thing to go on a journey with people. Yeah. So I was alone at the beginning, but now I'm starting to see a lot more people open up, which yeah. is amazing and we can help each other. So yeah. thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, brilliant, man. So um, just to give a... All the books that James mentioned is going to be in the description and you're going to be seeing a lot more of me. And if you want to get me more information, I'll put the, my details in regards to where you can follow me and everything like that. So thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. Thanks a lot, James. Appreciate it, man. Much love. Thank you too, man. Stay safe. Nice one.